custom elements allow us to create our own HTML tags to encapsulate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's port this styled HTML element into a custom element. Our custom element will have this HTML tag. Note the custom elements must have a hyphen in their name to differentiate them from native HTML elements. Since we'll be defining our custom element in a separate JavaScript file, we need to link to that file. Let's set type to module. By setting type equals module, the script tag's defer property is implicitly set, so it's safe to place this in the head. In the JavaScript file, we need to do two things. Number one, define the custom element. Number two, register the custom element. We define the custom element with an ES6 class definition. We can name this class anything we want. I'll name mine custom element. Custom elements need to inherit from the HTML element class. This allows our custom element to have access to common HTML element features, such as event listeners on standard events. In the constructor, we need to invoke the super function to establish the correct prototype chain. We next need to define a method called connected callback. Custom elements have four different lifecycle methods that are called at different points in the different stages of the element. We'll cover all of these different lifecycle methods in a future video. The connected callback method is invoked each time the custom element is attached to the DOM. There are several different ways to apply the markup and styling to a custom element. We'll cover each one of these methods in a future video. The simplest way is to assign a string containing the markup and styling to the inner HTML property. To achieve this, we can create a constant that stores a string template literal that contains the markup and styling. We changed the CSS class name to avoid CSS name conflicts. There is a feature of web components called the shadow DOM that will make our web component fully encapsulated where the element styling is actually detached from the standard DOM. We're currently not using the shadow DOM in our example, but if we were to use the shadow DOM, then we would not have to worry about CSS class name conflicts. At the end of this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the shadow DOM. Next, let's assign this string containing the markup and styling to the inner HTML property. Finally, we need to register our custom element. We register the custom element with the define method on the window object's custom element property. Now that we've defined and registered our custom element, we can actually use it in the HTML just like any other native element. As you can see, the contents of our custom element are placed into the web page just like any other native element. We can even target our custom element in CSS and use it in our JavaScript. Since our custom element is a part of the DOM, we can reference it using the standard DOM APIs. And since we inherited from the HTML element class, our custom element has access to all of the common features of native HTML elements. To demonstrate this, let's attach an event listener to our custom element, listening for the click event. As mentioned earlier, the internals of our custom element are not fully encapsulated and are accessible from the outside. For example, if we were to apply styling to all divs in our page in the global CSS, then the div internal to our custom element would also be affected. As mentioned earlier, we are able to fully encapsulate the internals of our custom element from the global CSS applied to the standard DOM tree by placing our custom element in the shadow DOM. We'll cover the shadow DOM in detail in a future video, but for now, I'll just show you how to use it. We enable the shadow DOM feature through the attach shadow method. We pass in as an argument to this method an object with the property of mode set to the value of open. We then attach our string containing our markup and styling to the inner HTML property of the shadow root. By saving these changes, we can see that the global CSS no longer affects the internals of our custom element.